coming up on today's show. Tesla posts another amazing quarter and obliterates Wall Street predictions. The Volkswagen ID3 gets a five-star crash test rating from Euro NCAP, and the Hummer EV is revealed to the world. And there's some controversy over if it's actually real or just CGI. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup into the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. Thanks for joining me. We have 30 news stories to get through plus one bonus story I really need your help with this week. So let's get on with it. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by going to electricauto.org. We start today with the pertinent figures from Tesla's third quarter earnings report, which was published after the close of trading on Wednesday. Continuing its seemingly unstoppable growth, Tesla set new production and delivery figures with deliveries of nearly 139,600 vehicles and production figures of just over 145,000 vehicles. We'll deal with some of the other pieces of information from the shareholder call later in the show, but Tesla finished the quarter with an adjusted profit of 76 cents per share and a total revenue of $8.7 billion. That's far better than the 55 to 67 cents profit and 8.3 to $8.4 billion revenue expected by Wall Street. According to Tesla, it now has a real chance of making half a million cars this year. And I cannot doubt that from the figures we've seen. Volvo has been teasing the all-electric version of its XC40 electric crossover for some time, and this week it finally released US pricing for the same. With the internal combustion engine version of the XC40 already available in some markets, from $33,700 in the US, for example, the XC40 Recharge, to give it its proper name, will go on sale in the US next year, priced from $53,900. And 90 US dollars. That's significantly more than the gasoline version, but it also offers significantly more power and performance. Interestingly, Volvo is going to make the XC40 recharge available through a conventional ownership model, but also through an all-inclusive subscription plan that includes insurance, maintenance, roadside assistance, and wheel and tire replacement. That says Volvo will cost from around $700 per month. Tesla has long been criticized for its decision to pre-sell its full self-driving package to customers years before the feature has actually been rolled out. But this week, those who had opted to buy their Tesla with self-driving packages enabled have every right to pat themselves on the back, thanks to the news that Tesla is about to increase the cost of its full self-driving package to an amazing $10,000. And that price rise due on Monday will apply to new cars or cars that are having an upgrade to FSD, even though they've already been purchased. Given how much time Tesla and Elon Musk has put into promoting full self-driving as being safer and more convenient for customers, the $10,000 price tag to activate feels like another barrier to self-driving ownership. I know many Tesla owners won't flinch about adding $10,000 to their car's price, but for others, especially those who've scrimped and saved to get behind the wheel of a Tesla, this is going to feel like a lot of money. The Volkswagen ID3 is now well into its second month of deliveries across Europe, and this week, official crash test results for the same were posted online by Euro NCAP, the European-wide safety body responsible for testing the crash test worthiness of all brand new cars. Scoring 87% for adult occupant protection and 89% for child occupant protection, the ID3 managed to achieve a 71% for vulnerable road users and an 88% rating for its safety assist features. Compared to other vehicles in a similar segment, the test results are certainly in line with the competition, with the ID3 holding its own in every category and actually being near the top of the charts for child occupant safety. BMW celebrated making its 200th 
1,000th i3 electric car this week. Introduced in 2013, the i3 hasn't undergone any major physical design changes, at least when it comes to the exterior of the vehicle. But the drivetrain has received several upgrades over the years, as well as the battery pack, going from a 60 amp hour battery pack at its launch through to a 120 amp hour pack that is currently being offered. While the i3 sold pretty well in North America in its early days, it's fallen out of fashion in recent years. Meanwhile, in its home country of Germany, it's been the exact opposite, with the i3 selling terribly in its early days before experiencing a real surge in demand over the last couple of years, helped in part, I'm sure, by Germany's recent electric vehicle incentive programs. While the future of i3 is not 100% known yet, here is to another couple hundred thousand examples. When a co-founder of a company steps down, it's frankly never good news, and in the world of automotive startups, it usually means there's something pretty bad coming. So when we heard that Daniel Kirkert, co-founder and CEO of Byton, was stepping down this week, well, it only further cemented what we already suspected about the company. Byton's future is less than rosy. Earlier this year, Byton essentially shuttered all of its operations, having hit tough financial times, and all of the media team that we've met over the years have now left the company and found new positions elsewhere. Carsten Breitfeldt, the other co-founder of Byton, left his position more than a year ago, and frankly, I can't see any universe in which we'll see Byton actually bring cars to market. Or for that matter, see me recover the hospital bills I was saddled with after I fell off a poorly constructed media riser at the Byton Presser at CES this year. Oh well, that's life. After months of teasing, the GMC Hummer EV finally got its virtual online reveal this week, complete with virtual online media briefing the very next day, costing between 80,000 and 112,000 US dollars Depending on which version we're talking about, the Hummer EV is billed by GMC as the world's first true super truck. Powering it is the new Ultium battery pack GM is preparing for market launch. With the promised performance of the high-end Hummer EV Edition 1, which has 1,000 horsepower and a sprint time of less than three seconds, GMC says it's sold out of launch edition trucks in less than 10 minutes, and it now has a 2,000 strong wait list as well. But while the truck and its off-roading capabilities impressed, what didn't was the admittance that there isn't a production intent vehicle yet, spawning headlines about the truck being just CGI. However, it is important to note that while there are physical trucks in existence, like many automakers revealing new cars, it's not functional yet. GMC has just under a year to finish tweaking and actually make it into a production vehicle. Tesla has officially begun pushing full self-driving capabilities via over-the-air software update to select Tesla customers enrolled in its beta software test program. I don't have any video to share with you of this beta test full self-driving functionality because well, Tesla doesn't have any video to share and I haven't been able to get any. But of the videos I've seen online thus far, the software does seem to handle a variety of in-town situations. That doesn't mean I haven't seen some bizarre behaviour though, like one car which decided to enter into the right turn lane pretty late, cutting across a cycle track. This move from Tesla has already attracted the attention of NHTSA, which says it's very closely monitoring Tesla's beta program and says it will not hesitate to take action if it needs to in order to protect the public against, quote, unreasonable risks to safety. Harley-Davidson has issued an official recall for a total of 1,012 Harley-Davidson Livewire electric motorcycles. It's believed an issue with the onboard charging system can cause affected motorcycles to suddenly shut down and fail to restart, leaving the owner stranded and potentially increasing the risk of a crash. The recall campaign, which started this week, will see Harley-Davidson reprogram the charging systems of affected bikes at their local dealerships. I'm not sure if this is a new issue or if it's one that's related to the same kind of problem that Ewan McGregor had in episode eight of Long Way Up, where his custom modified off-road pre-production live wire failed to turn on after an issue with its battery management system. But if you are an owner, do expect a recall notice very soon. And now it's time for short shorts. General Motors has announced a $2 billion investment in its Spring Hill, Tennessee production facility. This is in order to transition it to making 100% electric vehicles. 
Some of the vehicles made there will include the production version of the Cadillac Lyric EV. Tesla has issued a formal recall of Model S and Model X cars in China to fix an alleged issue with the ball joint on both cars' suspension systems. While Tesla has issued the recall, it claims that there's no defect and says China is forcing a, quote, unnecessary recall. The SAE has published the latest J2954 wireless charging standard for electric vehicles. Having taken more than a decade to iron out the kinks, the new standard allows up to 11 kilowatts of power transfer. Sightings of Teslas entering into the entrance of the Boring Company tunnels in Las Vegas suggest the new link between the various exhibition halls at the Las Vegas Convention Center could be operational pretty soon. It will dramatically slash travel times. Another Chevrolet Bolt EV caught fire this week, adding to the list of already known Bolt EV fires. It's not known what caused the fire or if the vehicle was charging at the time of ignition, but expect this to add extra urgency to investigations underway at both NHTSA and General Motors. During the Tesla earnings call on Wednesday this week, Jerome Jouillen, Tesla's president of automotive and Tesla Semi, said that the company is working with other providers to build out the Tesla Megacharger network for Tesla Semi. Who and what they are, though, was not discussed. Hungary published its pricing for the recently revealed Dacia Spring this week. While the car will retail from the equivalent of 20,000 US dollars, incentives in Hungary will reduce the effective price to just over 12,000. A Tesla service bulletin obtained by Electric this week shows that Tesla is well aware of the design flaw of Model 3. That means that the rear bumper can fall off due to water being scooped up inside the hollow structure. It's said to affect all Model 3s built before May last year. Karma Automotive has announced that its all-electric version of the Rivero sedan, the Karma GSE6, will retail from $80,000 when it enters into production. It's due to hit the market next year, but frankly, I've seen nothing of the car to date. Welsh automaker River Simple has announced that it intends to begin production of its super lightweight Rasa hydrogen fuel cell electric car in 2023. The car is built for efficiency and reminds me very much of a mini-me crossover between the Honda Insight and the EV1. NREL, in collaboration with the Charging Interface Initiative, has been testing super high power charging connection equipment capable of up to one megawatt of charging power transfer. While you're not going to see that in a car yet, the system would be ideal for use in electric buses and electric trucks. Electrify America has launched a new online portal as part of continued repercussions of the Dieselgate scandal. It's designed to help new electric car owners identify the right charging station for their home, plus find any applicable incentives in their area. The Windsor, Ontario production facility in Canada, owned by Fiat Chrysler, is about to undergo a transformation to become a 100% electric vehicle production facility. It's where the current Chrysler Pacifica and Pacifica Hybrid, plug-in hybrid, minivans are made. Foxconn unveiled its open source electric vehicle platform this week. Called the MIH platform, the goal of Foxconn's platform is to make it easier for automakers to bring electric cars to market, as well as make it easier for developers to build software for them. Right now, though, there's little to see of either. Fiat has officially priced the all-new all-electric Fiat 500 for sale in Italy. After incentives, the pint-sized car will retail from just €19,900, or around US dollars equivalent. General Motors withdrew its petition from NHTSA to allow its autonomous vehicle arm crews to test autonomous Chevrolet Bolt EVs with no steering wheel or pedals this week. Instead, it applied for permission to test a brand new vehicle with no controls, most likely the crew's origin. Tesla has quietly changed the warranty terms on its used Model S and Model X cars. Basically, it appears to have gotten rid of the used vehicle extended limited warranty option, which was good for two years or 100,000 miles. But lower warranties for used cars still exist. LG Chem has announced that it will triple its battery production capabilities in the coming months in order to ensure it can meet demand for automotive batteries. 
The company says it's also developing a new battery cell, which from the specs does sound very similar to Tesla's recently announced 4680 cells. Staying with batteries for a moment, SK Innovation, or SKI for short, has unveiled a new battery cell that it says could offer up to 500 miles of range on a single trip, only from two very quick 10-minute rapid charging sessions. It hasn't detailed what the battery chemistry being used is. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. We often cover high-end, super expensive electric motorcycles on this channel, but there's also a really big market out there for motorcycles that are less about speed and more about utility. Which is where New Zealand-based Ubico comes in. It's been producing off-road capable two-wheel drive motorcycles for a number of years, and it's just unveiled its new 2021 model year lineup. Lighter than previous model year bikes, this year's 2x2 bikes offer a 23% increase in battery capacity. You can now choose between a variety of different battery pack sizes, ranging from 2.1 kilowatt hours to 3.1 kilowatt hours, both removable, and the motors have received a 10% increase in efficiency. While these bikes are not built for speed, top speed is limited to around 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers per hour, they're built for off-road capabilities and ruggedness. Priced at far less than most electric motorcycles, these off-road monsters are well worth checking out. And you know what? We're going to. And finally, the last of the original Tesla Roadsters rolled off the production line more than eight years ago. Tesla has, for the most part though, continued to service cars of customers who've been willing to pay Tesla to keep those cars on the road. And while in recent years there have been a number of specialist non-Tesla garages formed by previously Tesla engineers popping up around the world that are as knowledgeable and more affordable to use than Tesla's service, parts are becoming an issue, especially as only 2,600 were originally made. Traditionally, independent garages have been far more keen to repair existing broken electronic components. Tesla's just been replacing them with new parts. But this week, we learn that Tesla has been quietly buying up remaining functional Tesla Roadsters as they go up for sale on the used car market, paying a premium for them and then gutting them for parts to keep other cars on the road. It's a very cannibalistic approach, but it could result in fewer original roadsters surviving. And while this practice is fairly common for older classic cars, it seems too soon to see this happen to the Tesla Roadster. What say you? And on that note, we are almost done for today. I say almost because I want to ask you for your support on a little issue we have here at Transport Evolved. For those who don't know Erin, our amazing animator, camera person, and first full-time employee at Transport Evolved, she woke up to a surprise this week when she discovered her car, Ruthford, had been stolen from outside her house. Erin's been saving up to buy a plug-in car to replace her old Honda, but she's also been super keen to be financially prudent and not go into a huge amount of debt in her mid-twenties. So she's been holding out and saving the pennies. But now her car has been stolen and, as we discovered on Friday, wrecked after someone joy rode in it. So she's now without a car and the search for a new ride has been pushed up by quite a lot. She set up a crowdfunding campaign, which I'll link below, to help cover some of the losses and bridge the gap between her savings and what she actually needs to buy an affordable used plug-in car. So if you're interested in helping her out, please do. And yes, I'll be putting in some of my own money as well. Before I go, I want to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, or find another person to talk about making your own switch to electric with by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below, as well as finding links to our Discord chat room and our brand new, ready for the holidays, swag store. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And yes, please do continue to wear a mask, keep your hands clean, and if you're in the US, don't forget to vote. Keep evolving.